Hello everybody. Today's video we're going to learn how to identify some of the key conifer species here in the Pacific Northwest. We're up here in the Cascade Mountain Range and we're about at I think a thousand feet of elevation. I'll double check might be closer to 2,000 feet. And our first tree we're going to identify is the silver fir, the amabilis, which is this big tree right up here. So you can see its big trunk right up there. Let's go take a look at it. All right. A lot of true fir trees have these blisters on it. And those little blisters are full of sap. So that's, that's one way to identify a true fir tree. This is the silver fir and its little leaves or needles here, they lay pretty flat, but there's no part to it. They grow right over the top center of it and side to side. And on the underside, they have two distinct silvery rose and a little notch at the tip and their cones grow straight up way up high in the tree I can't reach up there to show you but the cones face up and when they fall off they fall off little flakes at a time not the full cone if you do see a full cone on the forest floor it's likely because a squirrel has chewed it off and it's dropped all the way to the ground so that they could go grab the whole the whole cone hop off to a log and eat it or store it for later so this one right here is the amabilis or the silver fir that grows at higher elevations above a thousand feet let's go to the next tree our most common conifer tree here in the Pacific Northwest is the hemlock tree, the Western hemlock tree, which is this big tree right here. You can see, let's look at its bark. Its bark is finely furrowed, so much thinner than some of our other trees, but thicker than the grand fir, so somewhat fire resistant. And let's look at its needles. Its needles are all irregular shapes. Here's a good example right here. There's some that are short, some that are long. They kind of grow out all willy nilly and they're very short needles, very soft, very fluffy. Their cones are, whoop, it dropped a couple. Their cones are teeny tiny and they grow thousands of them on a tree so many and they drop them all the time so you can often find these guys still on the ground and western hemlock is actually one of my favorite trees to use as fire starter look at when the needles fall off these little twiggy branches are very fine and very resinous and they take very well to a match so if you can kind of find some dead ones on the ground like this little fire starter tip and look here's the cones on there find a big dead branch like this still on the tree or on the ground and you can get a whole witch's broom of these take a match to it a very good fire starter so very common tree here in the pnw the western hemlock now let's go to the Douglas fir. Here's our great big Douglas fir tree. The bark on a Douglas fir tree is very thick, chunky, and deeply furrowed. This is a very fire resistant tree and grows very prevalently in the PNW. One of my favorite identifiers of it is the cone. Here's one. They make a, a bunch of these cones and they're really easy to identify based on these scales and coming out of each scale is something that looks like mice feet and a little mouse tail, a little butt of a mouse coming out of there. There's an old folklore tale of the mice crawling up the tree to escape the fire and hiding in these cones and all you see out of there is their little hind legs and their tail. So that is a great way to identify the cone of this tree. Their needles, 
make a bottle brush type of thing. So the needles pretty much go almost 360 around the stem of the twig and very similar to a bottle brush. Very common tree here up in the PNW and very important tree that's been used historically for a lot of uh, firewood purposes. Very good kind of chopping wood. So there it is, the Douglas fir tree. A couple of things about conifer trees. Conifer essentially means that it's cone bearing and the majority of our cone bearing trees are evergreen, meaning they don't lose their leaves in the fall and they stay green year round. We do have one special conifer that does lose its leaves or pine needles, or needles, because it's not a pine, in the fall every year, and that is the beautiful golden larch, sometimes known as the tamarack tree. They are gorgeous. There's none growing here today, but I went there earlier this fall to see them when they were in their brilliant, yellow gold color and they were spectacular today though we'll be here on the west side of the cascade range at a mid elevation where the majority of our conifers grow oh. look at the snow wow we're moving higher up in elevation earlier i said we were at a thousand that was incorrect we're at two thousand but now we've gone uphill to 3,000 feet elevation, which is the starting zone for these mountain hemlock. This is a young one right here, but you can see at the top, it still has that bent over top. Tippy tops of all the hemlock trees are always very curved. And the needles on the mountain hemlock are more starburst than the western hemlock. They go at higher elevation, they still have different lengths of needles, but they're more uniform and they're very starburst. So they kind of come out in that spray. And here's a good looking one right there. Their cones are also bigger than the western hemlock. Here's a few right here. They hang down in the, in the branch just the same way as the western hemlock, but these are about double the size of the western hemlock cones. This is just a young tree right here, but they will make thousands and thousands of cones. So this is good indicator species for getting higher up in elevation. Our next tree here is up at 3000 feet elevation or just above and this is the quintessential Christmas tree. Right here is our lovely noble fir. And look at how these needles just rise like a crown. Like they reach up towards, towards the sky like nobility. And the bark also like a true fir tree in the Abis species has these little blisters all along the trunk. This uh, tree doesn't have cones on it, but if it did have cones on it, they would, just like all true fir trees, they would point up towards the sky, not down towards the ground. They would point up towards the sky. So this is the beautiful, noble fir tree. Their tippy tops are perfect to hang that Christmas tree star on. Unlike the hemlock tree, which hangs down, these trees, they have that really perky top. They stand straight up. Look at it like that. And like that, you can see that really straight top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my saw because I have my forest service permit to cut this wonderful Christmas tree. It's only 10 bucks to do, it's amazing. Here we are at a beautiful western red cedar. This is the tree of the northwest. Let's take a look at its leaves here. These are fan-like scales, very different than all the other types of conifers here. See how flat they lay? They almost look like ferns but these have scales on them when you look at it nice and close. 
and their cones are teeny tiny. Let's see if we can find some on the ground here. Uh, here we go. These teeny, teeny, tiny cones are those of the Western Red Cedar. Here's the bark, the tree trunk. See how the, the wood of this is very like brittle looking. It has these long vertical stripes to them. And the inner bark of this tree has been used by indigenous cu cultures for tons of things from cordage to weaving baskets and making baby carriers and all kinds of different things. A very useful tree to past and present cultures and just a gorgeous tree. One thing I personally love about the cedar tree is that most of the time there's not a lot of mushrooms that grow around cedar trees with the exception in my experience for burn morels on kind of the eastern slope of the cascade where there's been some cedar trees around i find a lot of morels so that is amazing a couple other trees i mentioned before the douglas fir and the western hemlock they have a lot of uh, mushrooms that associate with them such as the chanterelle and boletes and the hedgehog those all are mycorrhizal and associate with those douglas fir and hemlock trees and and so on there's plenty more trees here in the pnw i didn't even touch on the pines like the ponderosa pine on the east side and here on the west side we have the white pine and lodgepole pine and over on the coast there's the sitka spruce with their really spiky spiky needles so there's so many more trees but this has just been a lovely hike i hope everybody got to learn something new and maybe learn how to identify a new tree thank you everybody for watching today happy holidays and i'll see you on the next video click like and subscribe <laughs>